Hey, I'm James from Soka Dad Barbecue, and today we're unboxing the brand new Kamado Joe Connected Joe. So today is a special day for two reasons. Not only because I'm one of the fortunate few selected by Kamado Joe to get their hands on an early Kamado Joe Connected Joe for this unboxing experience. So thank you Kamado Joe for making this possible and sending me a product to be able to record this and get it out for launch day. But a quick disclosure on that, outside of uh, Kamado Joe sending the grill, the first charcoal ceramic fired Kamado they've sent me since my Big Joe back in 2020, everything since then like my Big Joe series one, I've gone and bought on my own, but I could not do this without the help of Kamado Joe. So thank you uh, for that. But nothing else about this video is sponsored. There's no mandatory specs or terms or marketing buzzwords that I have to read. So I'm gonna give you my complete and honest impressions of it. And the second thing to celebrate is this is a brand new charcoal fired ceramic grill from Kamado Joe. And these days are few and far between. The last new product was the Kettle Joe in 2021, just over two years ago. So I am excited to see what's in store. Now, before we get to unboxing, any good review should start with disclosing what your personal bias is so you can separate what my bias is versus what's good information for you. So reviewer bias and why then am I excited about the Komodo Joe Connected Joe? So just starting with my own bias and I recognize I'm a bit of a dinosaur when it comes to these things. I hear Connected Joe and I start going to power cables and Wi-Fi and inside there's a little part of me that just wants to run and tend the fire 100% myself. And this is not just true in the backyard, out on the open road, I also want a clutch and a manual transmission. But just like uh, in the real world, automatic transmissions have taken over the same as true in the backyard and this is where I actually get excited about the Connected Joe even though it may not be for me someone who just wants to spend their Saturdays running and tending their fire a hundred percent left to their own devices the fact that this reduces a barrier to entry that many people have in terms of the fear or anxiety of being able to run a fire and turn out amazing barbecue I'm excited when there's a product that makes backyard grilling smoking more accessible to more people and so for that I am a hundred percent behind this new concept and I can't wait to get it out of the box so we're going to do that now. Let's start unpacking and start our first fire. So I'll pop in and out of fast forward as there's things to share. But step one, we need to get off our packing straps and packing material. So I'll take you fast forward for that. Okay, so elapsed time is two and a half minutes and we are at this stage. And I wanted to rejoin you because I'm already excited because we have a proper Kamado Joe inside. And what I mean a proper Kamado Joe is one of the things that Kamado Joe does better than anybody else in the industry is their packing and assembly instructions. And this is really important to me because not too long ago, I just spent sort of three and a half hours uh, assembling another grill. I've helped friends assemble their eggs. I've owned four big green eggs. And when you get something out of the box and it's a three to four hour assembly versus what Kamado Joe pulls off in this tight little package, you will really appreciate what's going on. So we are two and a half minutes to there and we already have as you can see an assembled and nearly ready to go Kamado Joe. Once we open up our latch we're going to have access to all the components that we need including our divide and conquer rack uh, and everything else. So let me bring it nice and close we'll get back to work. I just wanted to share some enthusiasm here is that this is going to be a breeze uh, compared to some other grills or smokers that you may have assembled in the past that could be an all-day affair. We'll keep track of our total time uh, here but two and a half minutes in we're already looking good. Let's get nice and close. Keep getting everything out of our connected Joe. So that was speedy. Another minute and a half. So we're about five minutes total to get to this point. And I already can get a little bit of a sneak peek what is down inside. So I've removed our multi-piece firebox. And so I think we are ready now to start assembling our cart so we can get this up in our cart. And we'll start to worry about our finishing pieces a little bit later on. Take you back fast forward while we get our cart assembled. So the limited assembly that we have to do is get out our bolts, washers, and locking nuts and then connect it to the base of our stand. So I'll take you fast forward while I get the hardware out and get these connected up together. Okay, so we have our cart together. That took uh, 10 minutes, but to be fair, I've done this many, many times before. So if you've never done it before and you're actually reading <laughs> the instructions, maybe this is more like a 15 minute job, uh, but nonetheless, I'm uh, 10 minutes for the cart, five minutes so far of getting everything out of the box. So I'm about 15 minutes. And if this is your first time doing everything, maybe add another 10 minutes. So we're 25 minutes to get to this point, but we are now ready to get our Connected Joe into our cart. So I've locked the front wheels so our cart <laughs> 
as I say that, it's on an uneven surface as I've locked it. So now it's nice and stable. I'm actually glad I checked it. We'll be able to lift this uh, into our cart. Now this is normally uh, recommended, highly recommended uh, a two person job. But since this is technically when I'm recording this an unreleased product, I'm not allowed to have anybody who's not under a non-disclosure to see this. So I'm gonna take advantage of those two handles and just lift this in myself, but do not do as I do. Follow the instructions and get an extra set of hands just to help you with these handles, which gives us for the first time a proper lift point. You don't have to worry about bending your bands or opening it by the dome or anything like that. So that, that's a great addition to the Connected Joe. So take a fast forward while we get this into our cart. Then we've just got a couple screws on the bottom that we are going to use to fasten it into the cart so it stays nice and stable. Moment of truth. This is why you go to the gym, right? Okay, so again, I cannot stress enough. Do not do as I do, get a spare set of hands. But as you can see from that clip, if you have to He-Man it, uh, it is totally manageable with those handles and all the components like our firebox out that make this much, much lighter than the 267 pounds or something like that that it said on our box. But now that we have it nice and stable and secure in our box, I'm just gonna go grab those screws and attach it to the cart from the bottom so it absolutely is 100% secure and stable moving it around the yard. And then I'll rejoin you for our next step. Okay, we're now ready to start dropping in our multi-piece firebox. I'll take you fast forward while I do that. We just want to overlap the pieces, so not that they're butting right together, uh, because when we pull these up, they will close up. So we're going to start with what looks like a gap, but when the pedals are pulled up, that gap will go away. So I'll take you fast forward while I drop these in. So we have two options now, depending on what you're comfortable with on how we install the ring. It's really important that we get these to seat properly and the ring is all the way down. If the ring's not all the way down, you can cause it to warp. Although I will say this is an upgraded thickness stainless steel that I can't even just by hand twist. So this is probably not going to warp, but I do want to seat it properly. So we can either push this down and then try and use the holes to work the pieces into place here and slowly just work around the outside, which I actually think I got first try. Or if you're not comfortable, what you can do is a trick that I shared a couple years ago on the channel where you take a, a bit of toilet paper, roll it up in a ball, and then you just place it behind each pedestal and that will make it easier. Let me show you what that looks like. So we just place it behind each wall like this so it props it out holds it out from the wall the only thing is these these will burn up toilet paper will burn up easier than paper towel will uh, is i do like to try and fish them out if i can so don't jam them down in there too too far uh, as it'll make it easier to get it out if you can't get it out it's no problem our first fire will fix that and these will burn up over time but I noticed after a couple years of doing this and doing a deep clean in spring that occasionally when I'm doing my deep uh, clean, I find one or two of these uh, still have not completely burnt up. And so to make sure that this doesn't end up blocking any airflow, if you can fish them out using your ash tool or something like that, or a, even a coat hanger, if you're careful not to scratch, the ceramics will make it uh, easier to make sure we have great airflow all the way around. So now that we've got um, a little bit of a toilet paper ball, we'll be able to take this and drop it just like that. And it's perfectly seated down. I'm gonna go get a, a coat hanger and just fish those out real quick. Okay, next let's drop in our divide and conquer rack as well as our two deflector stones just to keep everything dry while we finish our setup. Let's install our side shelves now. So we're just gonna back out these nuts, keep the washers there so we can not drop them. Says the guy who drops them. Then we'll be able to install our hinges for the side shelves. Let's actually just do this one before I drop more stuff. This, by the way, if you were wondering on any other Kamado Joe is why you don't lift your Joe by the hinges. As you can see, these are just machined screws set inside the band and not something that would be load bearing for a couple hundred pounds. Mention that while we can get a nice look at what you'd actually be lifting from should you 
choose to do that is again these just are machined inside of the inside of the band then we're just going to drop our side shelves into the notches here like that and when we flip it up locked in i'll take you fast forward i'll do the same thing on the other side last but not least we just have our handle to install as well as our control tower top but i wanted to show you this this is something that uh, myself included have run into uh, some issues. I even had one of these replaced early on under warranty is that these used to be painted inside our control tower top. And now we have sort of that nice raw cast aluminum. So no more paint bubbling or flaking, which I think is going to make uh, cleaning and maintaining smooth operation. So a nice little hidden upgrade here on our control tower top. Put this back on just like so. Come up top and drop it on. Same idea with our handle here. We're just gonna quickly loosen these screws and place it on, tighten that up. Take you fast forward. Logo facing up so you can see that. So far, we are now done. This looks just like everything before it in terms of setting up a regular Komodo Joe, but as you can see and reminded, this is not a regular Komodo Joe. We have a connected Joe. So let's move on to our power and Wi-Fi setup. Okay, so we have one cable to plug in here along with our power cable. Plug that in, moment of truth, see power. So here we are about 45 minutes later and our assembly job is all done. I think I could do this even less time if I wasn't juggling the camera, but I wanted to make sure I showed you some of those details like our new control tower top. The app paired up immediately. So even in this back corner, the furthest away I can get from one of my Wi-Fi signal boosters, this uh, found a signal and connected uh, right away, which I was really impressed with. And as we've gone through this unboxing, because there's <laughs> no information, there's no website, there's no YouTube, videos were charting on ter uh, uncharted territory other than a name on the box of connected joe didn't really know what we were getting uh into and so my enthusiasm as we've gone through and discovered a little bit more what we actually are working with is higher than where it started because unlike with other controlled grills you either have a completely controlled grill or a completely offline grill there's modes on here that are going to allow me to run this 100 manual <laughs> the way that i would like to do it and still maintain control with the bottom draft door and or the control tower top or we can hand the keys over to the algorithm and see how it does in either case we need to do a clean burn but i'm curious to try this self igniter uh, speaking of no information online i don't know what the pricing is on this yet but having that igniter built in can save potential tools i'm a huge fan of something like the grill blazer grill gun uh, but that's an extra cost and the fact that this is included potentially uh, as adding a little bit extra value to the package right out of the gate so let's go grab some charcoal uh, kamado joe was kind enough to send me a bag of their own uh, big block which i've used many many times over the years and i'm a fan of so let's fill this up start it up with the ignite feature and see how it does bringing our connected Joe up to temperature for our break and burn. The break and burn is not something you have to do, uh, but from just user habits and preference, I love to uh, do this. It's only 30, 40 minutes, 350, 400 degrees. Uh, make sure we get rid of any packing materials, any little styrofoam pieces that maybe fell down in there. I, I was able to get most of our toilet paper out to prop up those uh, rolls, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, but it's also going to do another thing, uh, which is just help make sure that we get a really great seal on our gasket. So this comes with some glue and a cure, but a little bit of heat, 350 to 400 degrees, get it nice and heat soaked, turn everything off and then just let it shut um, or close everything down, shut down until it's closed for about 12 to 24 hours. That'll just help make sure that everything performs for a long time the way that we want. Let's grab some fuel, fire it up. So there's no charcoal basket included, which I believe is probably so that we can get contact with this igniter. So let's grab some of our fuel. I had to get an exacto knife since this happens to be one of the triple bagged you open it it's like christmas presents that your parents used to hide open it still not open drop in our divide and conquer rack instead of putting the deflectors right on the bottom i'm going to drop in our x accessory ring so that i can move them a little bit over like a pizza pie configuration which is going to allow these to preheat so we get nice uh, heat up into our dome. So that heat seeks properly, these heat soak properly, and then we would push them together if we were doing a cook. If we were to put them right down at the bottom, that's going to stop a lot of that heat coming up. It'll just take that much longer to warm everything up. Cooking grids. Only reason I'm including these is there's just a little bit of glue from the labeling and stickers that were on there. Close this up and turn it on. 
Okay, we'll figure this out here for our launch sequence. I got our bottom draft door open, our control tower top open. Let's see what it says for firing it up. Let's go to temperature. Okay, once the draft door closed, I think for the igniter, set our temperature to 400 degrees and it wants the top vent to 25% open. So let's go do that. Let it come up to temperature. So just following what it says, it wants 25%. So that's what we'll give it. Rejoin you in a minute once it's up to heat temperature. So after a few minutes of not getting anywhere, I referred to the instructions and realized there's this button, which is our automatic fire starter. So let's try that again and give it a couple minutes to actually ignite our coal versus just circulating the ambient cold air throughout it. See you in a few minutes. Okay, so first impressions. Now keep in mind, this is not a complete review. I'll never do a complete review the day something arrives because I think you need a lot more cycles and repetitions to fully appreciate the nuance of the good, the bad, the ugly uh, in some cases. So today is gonna be first impressions. And so my first impressions, there's a couple of positive things. First, uh, I wasn't expected and I'm pleasantly surprised uh, that for the dinosaurs in the room, if you wanna kick it old school and run the Connected Joe, just like you would a Komodo Joe Classic Series 2, looks like we're absolutely able to maintain that and you get the benefit if you want to hand the keys and say Jesus take the wheel <laughs> and run it all according to the computer you can do that uh, as well uh, but for me the real sort of difference in terms of what I like about this versus the pellet Joe uh, that I saw in the app it reminded me of my unboxing and review of the pellet Joe the pellet Joe for me even though it runs on wood pellets and it looks to have sort of a similar uh, construction in terms of how it's working underneath the base and feeding into the dome, there's some big differences here. Primarily, the Pellet Joe takes up so much more space based on the Pellet Hopper that you lose out on some of my favorite accessories like the Joe Tisserie, where there was just not clearance for something like a chicken or a turkey to be spinning with, without hitting the base of the uh, Pellet Joe. This seems to be no such problem. The base looks identical to a Komodo Joe uh, Classic 2, and this has me wondering even if things like the accessories, like the slow roller as a stand alone accessory for the classic two or one will work in here just as well so i've got one of those on the way to confirm the test fitting uh, i'll have to borrow the joe tisserie uh, that i gave to my neighbor for my classic as i am using a big joe series but these are all things that i'd like to test in a future video so let me know down in the comments what you're curious about what you'd like to know more about and what we should put the connected joe through its paces uh, as we head into hopefully warmer weather this spring that's it for today though i really appreciate you hanging out for a big deal, a, a brand new product reveal, the first one from Komodo Joe in the past couple years. Uh, and I can't wait to put this grill through its paces once it's done its break and burn and has sat uh, 24 hours to again, burn off those packing materials and make sure our gasket is sealed and it's ready to go. So let me know down in the comments what we should cook next, but that's it for today. I'm James from Smoking Dead Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up.